My name is Dirk and I'm running a marathon in less than two weeks. What an idiot. That's right. I am running a marathon, my very first marathon, in about 10 days, so less than two weeks away. And to say that I'm nervous is the understatement of the year. But I wanted to make this video because I wanted to share some insights with you on what my marathon training has looked like, what my preparation has looked like, and a couple of key lessons that I've kind of picked up out of this whole process. So I think the biggest thing for me is the five P's. And those are prior preparation prevents poor performance. And if you know anything about me, I'm very big. If I, if I set my mind on something, I obsess about it. Um, and I've got various people in my life that will tell you exactly the same thing. So I have read everything I can read. I've watched everything I can watch. I have researched everything I can research to help me know what I'm in for. Now, I know I'm not going to know what I'm actually in for until I'm on that start line or across that finish line. But I have prepared myself to manage it as well as I can. So a couple of tips that I've picked up. One. I made sure I went and got a marathon training plan that works for me, not for anybody else. And again, I researched a number of training plans and I found one that was a 12 week plan that I was able to look at and go, OK, this is going to work for me and I can get my head around it. See, I had to own it and really just invest myself and throw myself into it. So the training plan, which I have here, made sure that I ran four times a week, all right? So Mondays were my rest days or are my rest days. Tuesdays are my pace days. So those are the days that I run at kind of the quickest pace that I can physically run. Um, Wednesdays are a training day. Fridays are also a training day. And then Sundays are a long run day. So Thursday, what I would do is a strength or conditioning day which I would often do a yoga, you know, a yoga class or some yoga here at home. And Saturdays I would use as my rest day. So that's running four days a week, varying mileage across those weeks. Obviously, I'm in a tapering phase now, so my mileage is coming down quite a bit. Um, but my training days stay the same. I'm still training four days a week, just with less mileage. So that has really worked for me and I've been able to manage what my pace days look like, what my training days look like, and it's all kind of worked together. So I think that the biggest mistake that I've seen and from what I've heard from other people is that they, before their marathon, they've only focused on like their long runs. But speed is so important. So tip number two in this video is make sure that you run your slow days slow and your fast days fast. Don't mix them up because you need to use your body in different ways when you're running a race and when you're running long distances. You need to know that your legs can carry you quicker than you need them to, but you perceive them to, to carry you. And you also need the cardiovascular health to get you through the longer distances. So make sure that you are really focused if you're doing a long run a long easy run or a long slow run or as a lot of runners call it the lsd the long slow day run it slow because it's going to help you when you do your pace and your training runs so be very careful that you don't do that the third tip is be kind to yourself i got sick kind of two weeks ago and I was man down. I couldn't run. I was feeling very sorry for myself. I was mentally just out of it. I'm like, I'm four weeks away from this run and now this is happening. And I think we've all been there. 
but I had to remember to be kind to myself and don't push myself too soon, which I did. And I paid for it. <laughs> so I got sick on about the Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday, wasn't feeling great. I didn't run Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, woke up Monday, I was like, okay, cool. I'm still going to work from home, but I'm feeling pretty decent. Monday afternoon, I went for a run and my fever shot through the roof. Um, my beautiful wife got home and literally looked like, like she said to me, I looked like I was dying. So be kind to yourself and listen to your body. Please listen to your body. Tip number three is just enjoy it. I know it can be obsessive. I know you can get addicted to the runner's high. You can get addicted to the mileage that you're doing. You can wear them as badges of honor. But just relax and have fun. Remember why you're doing it. And remember that it's not the end. This is not the end of your running journey. And it's certainly not the end of my running journey. So I'm just enjoying it now. I'm in a space and a headspace now where I can just go and run and not have to think about anything, not worry about what's going on around me, just go for the joy of running. And I think that is an incredible place to be in and it's a very privileged place to be in. So it's awesome. Tip number four is make sure you know where you're running. What is the route? So whatever race you're doing, do a bit of research. Know the route. Know what's expected. Get the elevation map. Start training yourself to go, okay, at this point, there's going to be an uphill. At this point, there's going to be a downhill. And if you can, kind of drive the route or take a walk or use it as your long day. You know, don't run the whole thing, but kind of see where you're at. Make sure you know the route because you don't want any real surprises come race day. So just keep that in mind because that's really going to prepare you. And also it's very important, and I've made this mistake in the past, know where the start of the race is. I've done a couple of races where the start and the finish are two separate places. I've parked in the wrong place and then I've had to walk like an extra 5Ks to get back to my car. So kind of plan logistically where you're parking, what time you need to get there, and factor in traffic and factor in your morning routine because you're going to have to eat something. You're going to have to get prepared. Make sure that you factored all of those things in so that when you're on the start line, you're not stressed out and you are in a good headspace because that, as we all know, is the most vital part of running is being in a good mentally strong headspace because running is 50% physical and 50% mental. You need to know that you can get yourself over that line when your legs are screaming to stop and crawl and cry. So don't get into that place where your brain is agreeing with your legs. They should never be friends. Your brain and your legs, not friends. They're adversaries. And one's going to win. Which one is going to win? That's up to you. Number five for marathon training is don't see the marathon as the last finish line. If you're a lifelong runner, and if you're a runner, then this race that you're doing is just this race that you're doing. This run that you're doing is just this run that you're doing. You are never finished. Keep pushing yourself. Keep extending what you can do. Keep enjoying the running. Keep enjoying the journey. So I'm 10 days out. My legs are feeling good. I went for a run this morning along the beachfront. It's really been a privilege. Last tip before I go. Vary your training. Vary your activities. When you're doing strength and conditioning, do strength and conditioning. Make sure that your body and your muscles are working. A couple of squats, a couple of lunges, push-ups, planks, whatever you can do to keep the muscles strong. And also, just a tip from me, that I've applied in my own life is do something fun. Do something that's not to do with running. I like to surf. I've got the privilege of living down in, in Durban. So I've got the sea right down here. That is something fun to do. It's not related to running in any way, but it keeps my mind fresh. And again, it's the mind-body connection that we're talking about. So find something fun to do. 
go out with friends for coffees, go to a market, go and watch a movie. Do something that stops you from being obsessed about your running all the time. Because the reality is you're putting in a lot of time with your running. Don't neglect everything else in your life just because you are singularly focused on one thing. So, 10 days out. I am feeling good. Um, I will be bringing you lots more videos and definitely some videos from the start line. I'm doing a 10k race this weekend. Um, it's part of my tapering uh, program, so it's a 10k long run, so I'm not going to take it too hard. Uh, but maybe I'll get some content and put it up and see how that goes. Anyway, guys, please keep getting on the roads. I will see you out there. If you've enjoyed this, give us a, a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and share it with your friends. Cheers.